Gordon, do me a favour. This chap needs a hand in with these unicorns. They say one man's trash... This monstrosity. ..is another man's treasure. I love it. Oh, yes! Nowhere is that more true than here, at Lotts Road Auction House in Chelsea. It's like a, a posh car boot sale in a loft. <laughs> These are made out of old whale scrotums. You just made that up? No, I haven't. You can Google it. This is where London's wealthy elite come to offload their has-beens. Bunch of rubbish. What do you want that for? <laughs> and refill their mansions with the latest trends. If I got this piece, it would have to go into the London flat. Thousands of buyers around the world. They live in Hong Kong, China, you know, Crystal Palace. But as each bid shows... Sold. ..the taste of the super-rich is changing. Oh, please, just oh, horrendous. Oh, to stay afloat, boss Roger Ross thinks Lots Road has to change too. I am the boss, and I, my, I will get my way. But can he keep his staff on side? You're being a bit awkward. Absolutely. And I don't appreciate it. And keep the obsessive collectors, shrewd dealers... Honestly, it's dead good. ..and wealthy housewives united in their determination to outdo and outbid one another. This is when it goes well, but trust me, sometimes... ..sometimes doesn't go well. Welcome to the strangest auction house in Britain. Going, going, gone! Monday morning. At Lots Road Auction House, it's the busiest day of the week. Yesterday, this room played host to the weekly auction. From sideboards to sofas, candlesticks to corner units. Over 700 items went under the hammer. Now the successful bidders take away their bounty. Yeah. You happy with that? Excellent. OK. Right. 100 miles an hour, yeah? And the hundreds of items that will make up next week's auction begin to arrive. It's lovely. He's lovely? Who is he? So he's... He's just a boy riding a sea serpent. Some kind of a mermaid or something. A dolphin. A dolphin. There's a secret code. There we go. Thanks, sir. Didn't actually know who he is. <laughs> Andrew Mackay is Lots Road's external valuer. Yeah, hello, Lady Rennick. It's Andrew here from Lots Road. Some of the auction house's best lots come from the local community. If you wanted, I could pop around this afternoon at some stage. Hardly surprising in an area where the average house price is over £2 million. This is, uh, this is, this is us. And we are here on the banks of the River Thames. Most of our work is Fulham, Chelsea, Knightsbridge, Belgravia, and a little bit up in Bayswater and Notting Hill, slightly less so. I have an understanding of how this area works very well, I think, and with the makeup of this area. I've got to go to Mayfair at 11 o'clock. I could come to you at 12, because I go to maybe six or 10 houses a week. I've actually been in a considerable percentage of the places around here. I suppose district nurses might have been to more houses. Goodbye, loved ones. Bye. Years of home valuations have given Andrew a unique insight into the lives of London's super rich. I think sometimes I'm amazed by the not so much the items that um, come through the door, but the waste and the extravagance of, um, of this town, actually. Last week, a gentleman came in and he asked me to go around and look at a flat in Sloane Street. And the flat was colossal. And this man said, these people don't actually live here. They really live in Asia. And they just use this flat when they come to shop at Harrods for four nights a year. So I was like, gosh, they come all the way from Asia and have this flat just for shopping at Harrods. It turned out I misheard him, and they lived in Isha in Surrey, and nevertheless kept this flat on Sloane Street just for their trips to go shopping at Harrods. I mean, it's a bit loopy loop, really. Isha's only about 20 miles away. Today, Andy has made a short trip to see local housewife Sam. Hi, Sam. How are you? Nice to Sam's you. purchased an oil painting at an auction, but now she's desperate to sell it on. All right, so this... Oh, right. Yeah. But keen to get rid of him. 
You don't know who it is or anything? No idea. Um, pictures of... Portraits of women tend to do better than of men, so... And portraits of young people tend to do better than old people. Sure. Or middle-aged people, whatever age he is. You've got a fat old man, I should yeah. do well. He's <laughs> perfect. So, uh, oil on the canvas. Send it down, I'm sure we can send it. OK. I think people know almost immediately when they buy something, whether it was a mistake or not. They just take it home and it looks wrong. They live with, try and live with it for a couple of months and they get rid of it again. But it's not a very good option, actually, to buy something and then sell it, because if you buy it, you pay 24% buyer's commission. And if you sell it, depending on the item, you pay either 15% plus VAT and insurance, 19% minimum. If you buy something and if you sell it for exactly the same price, you will have lost almost half your money. See you. Bye. Thanks so much. Whilst renovating her new house, Sam's become a regular at Lots Road. No, I go every week. <laughs> the disease. But her new home is testimony that Sam's become something of an auction addict. Oh, she's from auction. She's one of my favourites. Um, and she was really, really inexpensive, and I love this. This was in Lots Road. I think it came from some old chateau. It's a door. Um, I think probably it was a shutter in a window or something. But not all of Sam's purchases have proved to be a bargain. OK, so the tapestry is here. I left a bid for it, and I left... I really, really wanted it, so I left sort of, sort of slightly over the estimate. It was sort of seven to eight hundred pounds, but I really, really wanted it. And I got a phone call on the Sunday night, and they said, yeah, oh, great news, you've got blah, 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 the tapestry. And I went, oh, that's amazing. How much did I get it for? You know, really seriously, I hope I got it for six or something. And they go, 1,700, and I was like... <laughs> and I said, no, I'm really sorry, but I only left X for it. And she said, um, oh, there's been some sort of mistake. And I hung up the phone, and, of course, all of a sudden, the adrenaline's going, because I thought I got it. It was like, oh, I've, got, I've got the tapestry. So it was like, oh, shit, well, maybe I should just say I'll take it for that price. Had a panic, phoned them up, and I said, I'll take it. So I got it in the end. So I paid for it, sort of through fate. I had to have it. An auction house has stood on this site for almost 40 years. This building, of course, used to be allotments. It's, it's called Lots Road, this street, nothing to do with auctioneering, because it used to be allotments here. Fortunately, it works quite well, the auctioneering, so people think it's the sort of natural home of London auctioneering. Da. From day one, Lots Road has been owned by the same man, Roger Ross. Da, da, da. I'm making space. If there's one thing that annoys Roger, it's his auction house looking messy. What about this one? Is it coming or going? Let's take it and move it over there. I just want to clear this gangway. My agenda is it's looking presentable. Gangways, the old stuff has been put away. Um, yeah, just so it's, it's easier for the clients to walk around and it not being a health hazard. And if there's one thing that annoys Roger's staff, it's Roger. Roger keeps us all very much on our toes with his unique um, management technique. So you just go and put it upstairs? Roger's very picky because that's his nature. I don't understand his mind, absolutely not. Haven't got a clue. But uh, I just try and keep him happy, which is impossible. Recently, in the spirit of harmony, Roger's taken a backseat role. Running this business used to mean everything to me. I didn't really have a life outside of here, so I was totally engrossed in this. I can see these are expert carriers, <laughs> but the manager said to me, the staff prefer it when you're not here. And he was quite serious, and I took it quite serious, and that, for me, was a cue to give me permission to go, you know what, I'm just going to back off a little bit. And I'm grateful, because, yeah, of course, I've got a life, and I realised that what do I want to achieve and do well, I don't want to spend my time at Lots Road, I mean... Now, Roger spends most of his days away from the auction house, following more spiritual pursuits, such as yoga and chanting. I'm very privileged. I'm doing my meditation. I'm doing two yoga classes a week. I invest time... Yeah, I invest time for myself. But it's not all about the boss. Roger's still keen to share the benefits of his spiritual learning with his employees. Roger consulted a guru uh, from the Far East, and they rearranged the building in uh, relation to Feng Shui. I'll show you. 
There's little sort of secret mirrors here. These were put up all over the joint. And they're supposed to do something. But I don't quite know what. I mean, you slightly wonder what the point is when there's so much, so many other mirrors hanging around the place, why they're extra special ones. But apparently they are, they are extra special. <laughs> this here was put up by the same guru, which is supposed to ward off evil spirits. And then there's a... That little thing up there is something to do with something, whether it's Feng Shui or something different. And the building's also been balanced by this fellow. What does that mean? I don't really know what it means. It's just a term I've heard. And he's balanced it by putting this here. That isn't just a blue jar of crystals. Well, it is, I don't know, it probably is just a blue jar with crystals in it, but it's... This is an energy mixing beacon. So it protects us. And then there's another one over there. I think, sadly, the chap who balanced the building has, has, was killed, actually, in a car crash. So it wasn't very good for him. How'd you do? I spoke with your colleague on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I was talking about bringing in some uh, silk curtains. Despite Andy's familiarity with Chelsea and Lots Road, he's by no means a local. Uh, we know I was brought up largely in India, actually. My father was a, was a holy man. He was a missionary there. I'll come yeah, I can Thanks. When I was a teenager, I ran away from home and got a job in Sotheby's. Because it's the only place in London I'd heard of, apart from Buckingham Palace. And I didn't think I'd have much chance of becoming um, a king. Are they all the same design? No, or? no, no, not at yeah, all. No. Yeah. Actually, I had heard of Holloway Jail, but you've got to be a woman to go there. So a pair of these, is it? There's one pair of these. Yeah. And did you have any, did you have any ideas of, of how much you needed for them? Uh, well, I thought I'd let you do your magic and give ideas of what you thought. And that was my first job in the um, auction industry. And it's been a gentle tumble downhill ever since. Well, why don't we try them at three to five hundred for this pair? Mm. Or are you hoping for more? I'm hoping for more, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Four to six. The valuation is a vital part of the auction process. Set the price too low and you'll have a disgruntled seller. Too high and there'll be no bidders. Well, why don't we try these at four to six? Yeah. And see what happens and see if you're happy. OK, I'm happy with that, yeah. That's all right. Most of the time, they're very uh, amenable and lovely and are very happy with the estimates given. But sometimes they say things like, what? What? You're shitting me, right? Add a knot. But, but I bought that in New York for $22,000 from Jay Kapansky. What do you mean you can't sell it? Hi, uh, good morning. While most of the lots come from private morning, sellers, Thomas. many come from dealers. How are you, dear boy? Right. Mike Bryant is a regular seller at Lots Road. I should have a walkabout. Cashing in on the auction house's privileged position in the Royal Borough. The majority of the people that come here um, are able to afford the little extra. Rich people. <laughs> You're not going to get much for it. Probably about 80 quid. 80 quid, it costs 70. Lots Road's head of modern items is Tom Cavern. I don't think he has a massive operation. I think he literally just chooses a few choice bits to buy and sell, which he knows that uh, people in Chelsea and the like will go for. These are my mirrors. Good, aren't they? At the end of the day, you're in Chelsea. Yeah, so the big houses, the five bedroom houses, have to be filled. A little Santi Million. Oh, oh. Good. When it comes to valuations, the traders provide their own special challenge. We have to keep an eye on the quality of the stuff that's coming in from the traders, of course, because if we have too much tiki-taki made in China stuff, it kind of um, lowers the tone a bit. We had an interesting incident a couple of weeks ago, actually. A man bought a big Arco-style lamp uh, from us and paid something like £180. Then he got home and he discovered that the lamp 
had a B and Q price tag on the bottom, saying something like fifty pounds, and we had noticed. But it was a pretty stupid mistake to leave the price tag on. Oh, what a chump! Bob. Yeah. Check the description on that bust. You think he's going to put marble on, oh, do you? Put female stone bust. Is it stone, Mike? It is, yeah. Or is it reconstituted stone, Mike? Yeah. The stone is different to reconstituted stone, Michael, isn't it? It's still stone at the end of the no, day. It's not. If you're doing it's the chem not. That's chemistry. The, that's the point. Look, because you can see all the chippings. Right, reconstituted, reconstituted stone. Reconstituted stone. <laughs> reconstituted stone. Who am I to reason why upon this world? Every Sunday, the doors are thrown open to the public for the weekly auction. I'm just thinking these are quite nice, these zebra stools. These are nice. That would be in a sitting room. You know, with books on it. We get all sorts of people through the doors, and that's one of the nice things about it. It's a window in the world, literally the world. We have some people who come in, buy tens of thousands of pounds worth of stuff, and then we never see them again. And then we have other people who come in every single week and have never knowingly bought anything. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to La Chelsea. Welcome to Lots Road. Hope today finds you all incredibly well. Um, right, so yeah, we're about ready to start today's sale. Uh, I've got a few announcements. In the sale room today is Sam, who's hoping to sell her unwanted painting. No, if it doesn't sell, I'll just leave it here. I really don't want to bring it home. I'll leave it here forever. <laughs> Someone will buy it eventually. The painting's already created some interest. It's a beautiful piece, and I really love it so much. If I got this piece, it would have to go into the London flat. It goes with the style of what we already have in the house. It's a beautiful piece, yes, yes. The painting's been given an ambitious guide price of between three and five thousand pounds, and Sam's going to need every penny if she's to walk away with this. It's a hand-knotted wool and silk rug that Sam's fallen in love with but she's also keen to avoid another costly attack of auction fever. I just get a bit carried away because it's like a game, so when the bidding starts, then you sort of get competitive, and then it's like, I won! At the end of it, you forget you've actually got to pay for it. <laughs> Lot number 415. This is the uh, dune white carpet from the rug company, and I've got bids to start me at £800. And what about 1000 In an effort to control herself, Sam set herself a bidding limit of £3,000. 12 with Bob. She watches on anxiously as two telephone bidders get the auction running. 15 bid. 16, Bob. 16 bid. 17, Young Harry. 17. 18. 18, I've got now. 18 with the lady. 1800. 19. Yes. 2000, ma'am. Two. Oh, three in the room now. Two. Two, two. Two, four. Two, four. Ladies bid here at two, four. What about two, six? Two, six. 2-8, I've got with a gentleman now. At 2-8, 3,000. 3,000, I've got 3-2. Sam's 3,000 pound limit is quickly reached. 3-4? No, yes, 3-4. And she's forced to sit and watch as it spirals skywards. 3-6, 3-8? And it's a 4-2 on the telephone. I'll give you all three chances. It's your chance. At 4, I wonder what it retails at. Probably a lot more than that. At 4, 2. 4, 4, ma'am, once. I'll oh, go on, then. 4, 4. 4, 4, bid. And four, at 1,400 pounds higher than she was prepared to bid, Sam's back in the auction. I'm at 4, 4. I'm going to sell it at 4, 4. Unless there's any more. What's your number again, ma'am? 299. 399. 399 it is at 4,400. With a 24% buyer's commission to be added to the £4,400 hammer price, Sam gets her rug for £5,500. I couldn't believe it. Some woman was bidding on the telephone. The urge to, like, rip the wire out of the wall. <laughs> like, yeah, no, but it, I paid a lot more than I wanted to, so it better look good is all I can say. It better fit, because it's massive. But Sam could still leave Lots Road in profit. Her unwanted painting has a guide price of between three and five thousand pounds, but to encourage some early bidding, there's a reserve of just four hundred. 
Right, so, ladies and gentlemen, next up we've got is lot number 500, which is the exquisite portrait behind us there. And I'm going to start the bidding off on that lot at £400. Would somebody like to bid me £400 on that lot? 400 bid, 50. Five, sir. Five. But where the bidding competition for the rug was fierce, when it comes to Sam's painting, I'm selling it at 550. I'll sell it at six. The auction room is a sea of calm. 600, says minimum. 600 pounds. I'm going to sell it at 600. Unless I see any more, I'm selling it at 600 pounds. Once, twice, three times by 13. You got it 600. Lot number 463, the shipyard, oil on canvas. The painting sold for 600 pounds less than a quarter of its guide price. Absolutely pathetic. But I can't believe it when they valued it, and it was way more. It was like three to 5,000 they thought it was going to go for. I couldn't believe it. I was 600 quid. Oh, God. Well, the only thing I can't work out why it is everything I've ever bought, I've ended up paying over for, and everything I've ever sold comes in massively under. It's like... Jesus Christ. Sam's not the only one having a bad day at the auction. Also in attendance is company boss Roger, and he's concerned that the clutter he hates so much is slowing his auction to unacceptable levels. We've got too many lots, and I'm, I'm feeling frustrated that we're running... Well, obviously, we're running late. 414, the Malay uh, Nanaj. 50. Are you here? 50. I'm at 500 once, twice, three times at 500. He's got 100 lots to go in 20 minutes, which ain't going to happen. My job is to actually do something about it now, because it's like I can't ignore it any longer. Going, going, gone. Back at Lots Road, the weekly cycle begins all over again. Sold items head off to their new homes, and the items for the next auction begin to arrive quite a large cushion and it's pure silk and filled with uh, Hungarian goose down, not to mention the Versace Atelier here. Yeah. Uh, 150, 200, that's the lowest I'll go. I paid 750 for it from Harrods in 1994. Here, for one of their regular visits to Lots Road, a married couple, Craig and Michael, and their dog, Chelsea. <coughs> Michael and Craig met over 40 years ago and found an instant connection in their shared obsession with auction houses. We've been coming to Lots Road auctions for 15 years, which rather frightens me. There's a couple of light fittings, there's a table, there's four chairs, there's four bar stools. Is it sellable, Michael? Oh, yeah, yeah. Michael and Craig spend almost every day buying and selling at London's auction houses. We have clients, extremely wealthy clients. They have their London houses and they have their country houses. And uh, if they say, I want, we try and find. Um, we don't deal. We are not dealers. And if a client wants us to do something, we will do it. Craig and Michael live together in their home, a stone's throw away from Lots Road. Married couples have drawing rooms. Pairs of puffs with a van <laughs> have libraries. With a collection picked up at auction houses, but fit to rival any art gallery, Craig and Michael's knowledge soon became highly sought after by Chelsea's super wealthy in a bid to add a classical touch to their own houses. You meet people. You get to know people, and through these people, you meet other people. The people we know, and more people that we have met through the people we know, know us. You could say we're like the Thunderbirds like of the... helpers. Yeah. We could rename uh, ourselves, instead of Thunderbirds, Thunder Gaze. <laughs> yes. Now they run a discreet service, scouring London's auctions, buying and selling on behalf of a very select group of clients. These actually are very good kitchen stools. I wouldn't expect anything more from this client. She's um, got a serious amount of um, money. So there are four, are there? There are four of them. I mean, th these are seriously good. 
Yeah. I, don't, I can't think who this lady is. Yes, and how did you start working with her? Uh, through another client. Oh, really? Uh, ladies who lunch. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you your receipts. Yeah, give, give us a receipt. If you could just sign. Oh, no, I don't sign anything. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Despite limiting his presence to one or two days a week, company owner Roger Ross still likes to keep a close eye on his auction house. And recently, things at Lots Road have started to cause him concern. The weekly auction sales figures have started to fall. It was 30% down yesterday. So I think that's the eighth week in a row. That is unusual, and I, I am concerned Roger's convinced that partly to blame is the clutter he hates so much. Too many lots in the building doesn't work for us. There'll be lots of choice, but my experience is that if you have too much here, all what happens is your average price comes down. So it's like going to a banquet, and all the food is fantastic, possibly, and you pile it all on your plate, and you go, oh, God, look, that's like... So what was interesting and... You know, you've got space to see it all. It, it turns into a bit of a mess. And I suppose that's my biggest nightmare, really. But as the week progresses and auction day draws ever nearer, more and more lots arrive. These are made out of old whale scrotums. Have you just made that up? No, I haven't. You can Google it. And before long, the sales room is bursting at the seams. We're nearly up to 400. We're not allowed to go over 400. So that gives an example of the volume. Oh, Say so that this is disorganised organisation at this stage. Um, and there is quite a lot to do, but it's going to get done. It always gets it's done. It always right. gets done. I've always said the day this sale room beats me is the day I've got to go. There you go. And it hasn't beaten me yet. But Roger has got a plan. There's some things that, that I'm going to suggest that we change. Take 50 of the biggest lots, remove them from auction, and send them back to their owners. He's just changed the amount of items he wants in the sale, which is actually a bit damaging, because I've got to backtrack and change things and tell people I can't do what we'd agreed. Oh, I wouldn't trust those legs, Gordon. Just pick it up, mate. And it's just tinkering. Take some of those away. I can only do what we can do. Literally, we are chuck the block. I don't like that. I never did. Can we not...? 30 years of managerial experience have taught Roger that reluctant staff are no barrier to a good idea. <laughs> Am I worried? No, cos I'm rather insensitive. I am the boss, and I, might, I will get my way. Can't be asked, Tom, really, mate, cos it's a joke now. I've got a store forward, furniture there. It can't be done. Yeah, I know, it's not helpful. He just sabotages the place. It's weird to, to have someone go to such lengths to actually make it so much harder than it has to be. So any, anything you're going to change, it does involve more work. They spend their lives here. They get in a groove, you know, so that's part of my job is to say, look, that's no longer acceptable. I use that word a lot, and we need to change that. And they don't like it. I'm not dealing with it. He goes, oh, uh, so, you've got, uh, so uh, you've got problems. What I think is that he often likes to just create a problem, deliberately, so that he knows we're all working. As if we haven't got enough work to be doing already. He's, he's probably chuckling to himself now, thinking it's funny. When I think of the characters that work for me here, I would say that they're a bunch of oddballs, and we are like a dysfunctional family. Tom, have you put these chairs in? No. I said they shouldn't be here, and you've, you've just left them lying here. You want, oh, you want a bonus? What a joke. Do you want to go to Lots Road, actually, tomorrow? On her last visit to Lots Road, Sam spent almost £5,500 on a new rug. Today, she's invited her friend Trilby to see how it looks in its new home. I got this sofa from Lots Road. Thank you. And it, it came in, and it was so it was such a bargain. I think it was, like, 500 quid. And it, but it arrived, and then literally three days later, there were mice everywhere. And I think the mice they were, were, they were in the sofa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were all over the whole house. My bargain sofa. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Like Sam, Trilby's no stranger to auction fever. But it's very exciting going to Lots Road. 
It it's is. It's gambling. It is. You get really overexcited. And the more someone else wants it, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure. The more yeah. the more someone wants it, the more you want it. Yeah. Right? Well, and then, then, then there's definitely a level of panic, which is because you always have a mental maximum that you're going to go to. Yeah. Which you go over. And then you, and then you start to sweat, and it's like, oh, Jesus. But then the adrenaline kicks in. I mean, it is like gambling. It's exactly it's the like same thing. It's like gambling. And yeah. then you get it, and there's a euphoria. Yeah. I won! <laughs> yeah. You have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and the 25% on, on top. top. Yeah. Hi! Hi, guys. Come on in. Thanks. Today, Sam has hired some removal men to help her find the perfect Hi, spot for the rug. Um, we're going to get some rugs down. <laughs> Slightly nauseous. <laughs> Well, just because I paid a fortune for it, I paid much more than I intended to spend on it. <laughs> Got carried away, had to have it. Keep going up. Thanks. Here we go. Please let this look good. Mm, well, it's up to you how you want it. We can lift the, uh, uh, the show. Oh, God. This room. That's the only thing. It's too white, isn't it? <laughs> oh god. It's no. It doesn't lift the room. No, it doesn't work. Okay. Oh god. I knew this was gonna happen. I don't love it, sorry. Oh god. That's okay. okay. You can sell it again. Okay. Oh god. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But you do realise I'm probably gonna sell it for half the price of what I bought it for. It's not working, yeah. is it? Yeah. Sorry, can you wrap it up and take it back down? Thanks, guys. And then, oh, no. It is. Oh, for God's sake, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, you God, I can't believe it. This is going to work in here. Hoping for last-minute salvation, they try the rug downstairs. Oh, my this God, it's huge. No, it's going to be fine. So you can put that under there. Oh, God. Actually, this will work. That one. Mm, I've really covered it. Oh, it's going to be too big trouble. Okay. It's going to be down here. Right. Oh, dear, what a trap. You know what? Mm. I don't like it. No, I don't like okay, it at all. Okay, phew. It looks awful. Yeah. It looks dirty. It's going back. Okay, take it back. On oh, the poor guys. Yeah. Guys, oh. sorry. <laughs> don't hate me. Can you pack it up again? I don't like it. It's going to definitely go back into auction, yeah. I'm, try I'm trying so desperately to like it that I'm convinced, and actually, the truth is, it looks absolutely horrid. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh. God, somebody better buy that thing. Oh. Lots Road regular Mike Bryant is back. He comes every day, Mike Bryant. I think he thinks it's a drop in centre for the agent. He's claiming that last week one of his items was sold for less than its reserve price and demanding a refund. I just wanted to check something with Angela. But general manager okay, Martin so, okay, thinks it's bye. Mike who's at fault. This chap, he's a nice bloke, you know, has basically gone over the writing. Of course, if we if we genuinely thought we'd made a mistake, then of course we'll we'll help people out with fees. We're fair people. But if if someone's tampered with their paperwork, we're not gonna just give money away. Hello, Mike. Morning. Hello, We've got a query, so I need to just speak to you about this. Yes, do. OK? In this case, we've got to be hard on Mike, even though he's a regular vendor. So, basically, your paperwork here, is this you going over it or not? Is that your writing with the blue? No, it's not me. It's not you? No. Right. So, someone's come over in blue and sort of changed, so there's obviously been a problem with your lanterns that they've sold, what, for 80? Yeah. Instead of 180, but this is not you. You haven't. Who, whose is this? Do you know? It's not me. Should we ask Bob? Yeah, I don't know who that is. So you don't touch your paperwork, 100%. Well, I haven't got a blue pen. I got black pen. That's fine. Do you know about this, Bob? Look, we've got we've got a problem with one of Mike's lots. Do you know what's going on here with this? That is that that that, that is um, Mike Bryant's writing. That's not me, though. The blue one is that your writing? No, no, it's, it's Mike's. But let's go, let's try that one again, I Mike. I might have used your pen, actually. Yeah, no, no, hang on a minute. All yeah. we're saying is, is this your writing? Yes. So it is, so why didn't you just say yes? Because I'm not sure. Mike. I did. 
<laughs> I'm not amused, Mike. Now, look, just listen, seriously. What we did, we marked it down, didn't we? Yes. I like you, Mike, but I'm going to tell you straight. Just listen, seriously. We're not going to make the deficit up. It's a mistake made by you, created by you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Good. So it was you, Mike. Good. So that's that dealt with. We move on to something else. I think if you ask me, did you, Martin, did you smash that vase yesterday? The answer is yes. Not no and then yes. Anyway. As auction day approaches, the sale room is finally in the kind of condition that will meet the approval of Lots Road boss, Roger Ross. Everything, that is, except for this. This, um... There was a, a mix-up over this bookcase, and I'm concerned it's still here. Purchased last week, but left here by its owner, Roger wants it moved by the end of the day. If people buy things, that's fantastic. All, that, all they've got to do is take them away. In his quest for a tidy room, it's not just his staff that Roger's prepared to upset. Hello, it's Roger Ross. I don't know if we've met, maybe. All I know is that I'm due £200 storage. You've got until Tuesday, 12 o'clock. We don't charge anything, but once you go past that time, we charge £20 a day. It's just a bit of a... I find it really frustrating. Really frustrating. That's irrelevant, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, ma'am, we've got... You've got a... You've got an invoice. It's a bit like going to the chiropractor, you know, when you've got a bad back, you know, and then the chiropractor puts you in a position and... And, oh, Christ! But then, actually, then you can walk. So it's a bit like that. Fantastic, ma'am, but you've still got to pay this bill. I'll, I'll settle for £80 plus tax. Ma'am, ma'am, I've, I've got to stop you there. I'm running a business in Chelsea, and we charge storage. I'm really sorry that someone's gone to hospital, but I can't help you. At Lots Road, like any auction house, the real stars are the lots themselves. Andy's final job of the week is to bring every item to life with a description for its sale card. This is quite an interesting one. We describe it as a farmhouse table. But if you look closely, most farmers don't vandalise their own tables, so I'm absolutely convinced this would have been in a school. You've got little hearts and things like that. Elvis. You can see Elvis's table. No, I don't think it's Elvis's table. Things come table. from Graceland. Lewis. Not Elvis. OK, Lewis. Must be a Welsh one. Oh, I love Lewis, it says. Oh, really? This says Taylor. A thousand bored school children have vandalised it. And we've called it a farmhouse table. Another way of telling is to run your finger on and see if there's any chewing gum. And there is chewing gum beneath that. So he's the gum-chewing farmer who liked vandalising his table, <laughs> or, more likely, he came from a school somewhere originally. Roger's back. Paul, that, that rug's not going to stay there. I don't know whose idea that is, but that's that... that just, please, just please take it down. For the past few days, his staff have been busy trying to carry out Roger's latest plan. Traditionally, sale rooms, in order to get the maximum amount of stuff into an area, you tend to put it in lines, and even... So that, that's our traditional way of doing it. His latest plan to create order from the chaos involves turning the auction room into a series of intimate room settings. Oh, sorry, Gordon. So instead of it all being sort of higgledy piggledy, there'd be a, it would be more thematic. It's more like you walk when you walk into someone's house. You know, it's pretty traditional, isn't it? You've got a sofa there, a coffee table, the telly's over there, and a bookcase is there. So it's like they do in IKEA. Basically, yeah. We're upmarket IKEA. Tom, you seem to have got taller, mate. 
Brilliant. Furniture stores have their layouts planned by interior designers and architects at a cost of tens of thousands of pounds. Da, 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 da. Roger left his to Lots Road's team of six porters. Mm. Mm. Oh, dear. Making it more spacious, the way they've laid it out, there's less space than normal. You see, it's, I have to be really careful about what I say um, because I'm not here to wind them up. And they've done their best. And it certainly looks different to how it normally looks. So they've got 10 out of 10 for that. But it just looks confusing. And we definitely need some more wall space because we're struggling with carpets on the wall, which is not what people have in their houses. So we need to hang some more paintings. I can see that they've made an effort to change it and shape it, but it doesn't work with my orderly brain. And I don't believe there's any room in England that looks like that, or that, or that. That's not how it works in a house, so... Yeah, room settings. We've got room setting there. Yeah. It's Sunday, auction day. The fine Kun runner. Okay. Lovely piece, this. Exquisite. Um, sort, of, sort of thing you see in a sort of palace. Amongst the crowd is Sam, but today she's not buying. She's hoping to sell the rug that just four weeks ago cost her almost five and a half thousand pounds. I just seriously and, hope uh, it goes for here, close so to what I paid for it. Four, four, five, the uh, white dune carpet. And I'm starting the bidding off there on that lot at £2,000. Two, 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 five, two, five bid. It's a lively start to the auction. 3,000, 3,000, three, two, three, five, three, five is bid. What about three, eight? But suddenly... £3,500. Do I see any more? And way short of Sam's expectations. I'm going to sell it at 3.5 and it's a C3.8 now. Got to make more. Let's see, let's see 3 eight at least. No. The bidding's One, over. 3,005. Going, going. Sold. Lot number 446. Including commission that. charges, owning the rug for just one month has cost Sam almost two and a half thousand pounds. To be honest, I took a hit on it, but I'm so relieved because I thought it could have been so much worse. I had the visions of it sort of sticking at 1800 and sort of fighting two grand, so I'm happy. After today's auction, Craig and Michael are collecting a chandelier. It's very much like the one that's in Absolutely. our library. Not for their home, but for one of their secretive and very wealthy clients. When you're handling these sorts of objects, you've got to make sure there's nothing wrong with them, because these things have got an awful habit of breaking. And thankfully, there are plenty of young, nubile men here to help us. <laughs> As is the norm when it comes to clients, discretion is absolutely assured. We don't discuss who we do business with, because it's the privacy of it. And we're talking about super A-listers, foreign royals and uh, people like that, uh, uh, and the old politician and the old captain of industry and things. Craig and Michael continue to scour the auction houses of London to bring style and culture to the homes of their super wealthy clients. And it all goes to show that anybody can, if you're advised properly, form a collection. And during their auction visits, they still find time to add more eclectic items to their own collection. In these homes, on Chelsea homes, you don't see stuff like this. And what a lovely hairdo. Oh, and I believe the Queen's got one of these, look. But unfortunately, the batteries have run out. This is a very rare Fulham lavatory. Uh, this is interesting. I bought this for a tenner, and this is uh, a dentist machine 
when you have your teeth out. That is a classic. That is a stuffed fox head with a toilet roll in its mouth. It's a disease. Um, <laughs> it's an awful thing to say, but you get a bug. You get a bug for finding things. You get a, 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 a definite kick when you pick something up and you know that it's good and nobody else has identified it. The hammer falls to mark the end of Lots Road's 1,824th auction, and tomorrow, the weekly routine will begin all over again. Let's go home. For some, it's a routine that has become comfortingly familiar. It's all I've ever known, really. I think when I first started, I got very excited about things. Oh, this is this and this is that. Dealing with people's stuff on a daily basis and see it's their problem to get rid of it. I think you get. A, I think it actually puts you off stuff slightly. I was got to check up the back. Let's check because we don't want any burglars to come in. That is open. Lucky I checked. It's a very nice job, but it's a little bit repetitive. You've got to do something between the cradle and the grave, and hanging around here is uh, is an option. And the other thing is I have this fear that some anywhere else might be a little bit boring. <laughs>